Hello there, my name is James Gibson and welcome to my tutorial on uh, Visual Basic 2010 Express, uh, which is an introductory programming language uh, that is a great way for new programmers to start exploring um, uh, exploring programming. Uh, it's a very responsive uh, program that you can see, uh, see how you're doing very easily and also it's free, which is wonderful. You can pick it up uh, just online it runs on any Windows computer and uh, it works very well and very responsibly as, a, as, a, as an introductory programming language. Um, so uh, we're going to get started here. In this tutorial I'm going to be explaining how to lay out the buttons for a very basic calculator uh, and then subsequent tutorials will explain how to program the background and introduce each element of Visual Basic as we go. So to get started we're going to create a new project. Uh, so we're going to start by opening up Visual Basic. Uh, usually it, I've got in my taskbar here, but you may well have it. You'll probably have to look it up in your start menu. So this is our uh, new project screen. Uh, we're going to want to go and click on new project. Uh, down here you can also see other projects that I've created. This is where this project that you're creating, you're creating right now will appear here after we've created it. So let's go open the project. Uh, in this window here, we're just going to pick a basic Windows Forms application. This is what you're going to be using about 90% of the time whenever you're using Visual Basic. Uh, and does uh, pretty much everything you're probably going to want to do with it. So I'm just going to double click here and then give my project a name. I'm going to call mine uh, my calculator. Okay, let's get started. All right, so uh, Visual Basic consists of programming at two levels. Uh, the first one you can see here is the design level, and this is where we set up our layouts for however our program is going to appear to the user. Uh, down the left side here, we have all the elements that we can potentially drag out to, uh, to show them, and uh, pretty much this form is what you see is what you get. If you want to have a button uh, for part of your program, you simply drag out a button, drop it down, uh, and you can rearrange it using the, uh, the, little, bo the little boxes uh, to uh, resize it. And uh, if you want to change any other elements of it, they're all stored down here where you can see um, this is all the different aspects of this button we can modify. Um, this, so this is a really good place to set up um, starting values. For example, if we wanted to have a button that says start button for, a start, for starting a game, uh, we could set that in here because it's not likely something that's going to change in our program once we get going. We can certainly, uh, certainly change it with using the other aspect of Visual Basic which is the programming level, um, which, uh, which we can access by double clicking on any element on here and it will open up a new tab up here. So for example, if I double click on this button, it's going to take me to uh, this window right here, which is called form1.bb. Uh, as you can see, there's my design, there's my form, uh, so I can switch between those quite readily. All right, so, uh, form1.bb. So this is where we can put in all of our programming for uh, for our calculator. Uh, now programs in Visual Basic consist of uh, uh, start off with uh, always with these two elements up here at the top and the very bottom where it says public class form1. You can see that they're both highlighted right now. This represents the very start and end of your program. If you put anything down here outside of it, it's never going to get processed and is probably going to cause the, uh, uh, the computer to throw some errors at you uh, to explaining why things aren't working properly for you. So anytime you're programming with Visual Basic, your entire program needs to be in between public class, form one, and end class. Uh, inside of this, we typically, uh, we typically have, most things run in either functions or in subroutines in Visual Basic. And you can see one right here. Uh, so this says private sub button one click and a whole bunch of stuff. Basically, we will as we go through the, the uh, tutorials and, and other and other tutorials I'm going to put together, uh, I will go through and explain what each one of these elements are. Uh, but basically, this comes down to when button one, which is our big button right here, is clicked, do everything in here from top to bottom. So there will probably be a bunch of instructions as you'll see shortly, there'll be a bunch of instructions written inside this subroutine, and when that button is pressed, uh, they're all going to uh, happen from the top to the bottom, and that's how it dictates control in uh, inside the inside a Visual Basic program. Uh, we're also going to have we're going to have quite a number of these subroutines. We'll have a separate one for every button that's pressed, 
um, for our calculator. Uh, so let's start going and laying those out. So for, for the most part, we're just for this tutorial, we're just going to be working in here, setting things up. Uh, so we're going to start off by, I'm just going to move my button out of square, and I'm going to just use copy and paste to make a few more copies of it. Uh, so I'm just going to drag these up here. So what I'm laying out right now is your basic set of buttons that you would find on any really simple calculator. Uh, I'm going to start off with creating a bank of 12 buttons. Um, and for these buttons, uh, these are going to be my number buttons. So this is where I'm going to input, uh, input numbers into my program. Uh, and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select each of these buttons one by one and come down here and you can see uh, all, sorry, this button has all of these elements. Um, and uh, I definitely encourage you to kind of click on elements as you're setting them down and go over here and look at their properties and explore them. Uh, there's actually an amazing amount of stuff you can do uh, using just these. Uh, for example, we can change, uh, this is the name of the button. I would probably leave this one alone. Uh, this is what our what our button is going to be called in our program. I know it says button one here and here right now, but these are actually two separate things. Uh, the text in your button, if you want to change the text in your button, you're going to need to come down here to where it says text. And as you can see, I'm just going to change that to uh, saying one. When I click out here, you'll notice it's changed to one. But up at the top here, it's still going to be saying, oh, I clicked off it. Uh, as you can see up here, it's still in this bracketed one, it still says name button one. And this is the uh, the name of the button in our program. So whenever we want to issue controls to commands to button one, uh, we're going to have to use this as our reference. Because this is what the uh, how the computer understands what that particular button is called. It can't see the writing that we put on the front of it. Okay, so let's get started here. So I'm just going to quickly run through here and just update these ones. I hit the tab index, not text. Uh, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then I've got a couple of special buttons that I'm going to do. I'm going to have a zero. And for this one, I'm actually just going to put a period in there. That's going to be my decimal point. And in here, we're going to have my negative sign, which I'm going to put in just like that. All right. So next, we're going to just need a few more buttons. So we're going to need some buttons that are going to run our math functions for our calculator. So I'm just going to select six of these buttons and copy them. I'll bring them over here. And be that far apart, just as long as they're clearly separated. And I'm going to go in here and change these ones. So this is going to be my multiply button. Use a slash for my divide. I'll sign for that one. And make one for that. Down here. Now this one, I'm going to these last two buttons are going to be a little bit special. These are going to be my clear button. So I'm going to say C into that one. And this one is going to be the equal sign. All right. So now we've got all the buttons that we're going to be using for our calculator laid out. But we're still going to need a few more elements just to just to polish this off. Um, so if we're building a calculator, of course, one of the most important things we're going to need is a text box, uh, which this is going to be our basically our calculator screen. So when we type numbers into it, when we type numbers into our calculator, they're going to appear in here, including negative and decimal numbers. And then you're going to hit, say, multiply, for example. This is going to clear out, and it's going to uh, disappear again. The, us the user can enter another number, and then they can hit the equal sign to finish off the calculation. All right, the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to add a label. Now, this label is a label is just a simple little instructional um, uh, prompt that, that tells the user something. So it lets us basically just send them a little bit of text. In my particular one, I'm going to start off here saying this one is first value. Because when our, cal when our calculator starts up, uh, oh, first veil, first 
fail. First value. There we go. So when our calculator starts up, it's going to say first value. The user is going to enter in some numbers. And as soon as they hit one of these top four keys, uh, that first value is going to uh, instead change to second value. And the text screen will disappear. Or sorry, the text screen, anything that's in the text is going to be saved. And then the user can enter in some more numbers. Uh, and then when they hit equals, it'll just it'll change to answer, and it, and it will give them the uh, final answer in the uh, in the text box here. And that's the basic operations of our uh, of our calculator. So I'm just going to reduce the size of this one so it looks kind of neater. Looks about good right there. All right, and that's going to be my layout for my program. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to jump in on how to start programming the number buttons, and we're going to go from there. Uh, so at this point, what, I will, uh, what you should definitely do is save your work. Go File. Do not just simply say, go Save Form 1. You need to go Save All. This will save in all the design and all the background files. There's actually a lot of files that support, that support your projects in VB. You don't see them, but they do exist. So make sure you hit Save All. Uh, it'll give you the same name as you started off with. Just go Save. All right, and that's our project there. So I'm going to leave this tutorial here, and I will come back in the next one. All right, thanks so much.